So today we're going to paint this barn scene in this beautiful apple orchard country. And I'm not sure if you can hear it, but there's some uh, cicadas, I believe, in the woodland area here. I'm um, kind of by quite a few woods here, and there's this um, humming sound. I've lived in this area for a while, and I've never heard a sound like this before. And I think it is a cicada year, but it's a really interesting sound. Starting out with a um, wash here, doing this uh, barn up on a hill, and I painted this barn many years ago, but I thought I'd come back and do it again. I'm going to cut off the uh, top of it just for the uh, sake of interest. Even though I'm just doing a primary wash, I'm already trying to... Uh, just compose it a little bit. Kind of figure out where my placement's going to be using this tone. And since I'm um, up from this barn, we're going to have a horizon line that's quite low. A horizon line probably would be right about here, I would guess. That's um, fairly important to identify for getting the um, perspective lines and everything, everything to um, go to the vanishing point. Might even try to go a little bit bigger with this barn. It's a bit of a challenge because um, I have the canvas um, facing away from the barn. Um, what's on the other side of this is not the barn but the woods. And that's because it is front lit. And I want to keep the uh, palette and everything off, or the sun off my palette. So I, um, but the barn is mostly front lit, so I have to turn the pallet away from the uh, direction of the sun and by default from the direction of the barn as well. But I can see here that my uh, perspective lines, um, the lines that should be in perspective are not, not quite accurate. So I want to measure that out a little bit. Another trick too is to measure the side of the barn, the length of it, and compare that with the front of the barn so I can get the architecture uh, somewhat accurate. And I actually hold my brush up to the um, angles of the, of the barn and then I'll uh, take it back, hold my arm really stiff and take it back to my canvas to uh, try to get the perspective correct, try to get the angles and the lines correct. All this perspective really is, it's just getting the angles of things correct, especially in architecture. If you get the angles of everything correct on this, you don't have to mess with, you know, vanishing points and you know, one point, two point, vanishing points, um, you know, things like that. Don't even have to think too much about the horizon line, though it's still a good idea to take that into consideration.
And it depends on how accurate you want to be with your uh, architecture as well. I like to keep mine fairly accurate. Normally I do this with a smaller brush, but I just happen to grab the bigger brush, so what the heck, I'm sticking with that. Gonna leave this area open back here. This is where the blue sky is. Actually, no, I think I might, I might cover that up with some brown too. It's almost a perfect day um, for a plein air painting if you like sunlight. This, um, there is not, barely a cloud in the sky. And it's a little breezy. You might be able to hear the breeze. But the lighting is just absolutely beautiful. So with this, we are dealing with a bit of two-point perspective, which means that these lines are going to recede to a vanishing point way off the canvas over here, and then these lines are going to recede to a vanishing point way off the canvas over here. And I do want to get those uh, somewhat suggested. I do want to make sure that this is at somewhat of an angle right there. It's just this faint line. They um, are doing some kind of reconstruction. They have some mound of something here. Something's covered there. I'm just going to pretend that's not there. Paint that out. And this kind of comes on a hill like that. The hill goes both this way and this way. So if we were doing contour, you have, you'd have contour lines going like this. Um, and then it drops off into like a ditch here that goes down to the road. But then you have contour lines that go like that too. So I'd like to try to get that feel in there. Okay, so I think the drawing's pretty decent. Um, probably could use some fixing up, but at least it gives us a nice starting point. And uh, if you're new to my channel, if you could do me a favor and subscribe, that would be awesome. And also uh, like the video. Give it a thumbs up. That keeps the uh, YouTube algorithms happy. And if they're happy, then they uh, show my video. If they're not happy, they don't. So there's some coolness in there. Cool uh, greens. It's in shadow area. Probably not as cool as I have them, but just laying down something to get started here. Gonna bring the tree up. It, it does almost cover up the sky here, but I want a little bit of the sky peeking through here to balance out what's gonna show there.
fresh paper towels here. And while I'm at it, let me uh, tell you my colors. I have titanium white, cadmium lemon, cadmium yellow light, cadmium orange, yellow ochre. Um, this is actually burnt sienna. A lot of times I use transparent red oxide, but today I have burnt sienna. Um, they're almost identical. Um, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, or alizarin permanent, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean, uh, viridian, and chromium green oxide. I'm noticing as I, because I have to tip this up so high, um, so you guys can see both the palette and the canvas, having the cerulean is not a good idea because now I have all this warm earth color that kind of ran into it, same with the viridian. I should have moved these over there to allow some drip down. So it's something I can note for myself in the future. Now, it's a very beautiful day, as I said, for painting. We have very clean light, very clean colors. But I know my personal weakness from past experience painting many years is that I could have a tendency to make these too clean and go home with this almost cartoony looking painting because I'll have such intense um, blues and reds. So I'm probably going to be uh, changing things up just a little bit to try to avoid that. And it's one of the reasons why I'm doing this wash here. It's to uh, give me something um, a little more earthy to build up on so I don't end up too crazy clean. I want clean colors, but not, not as clean as I've uh, done it before. And part of the reason is because I painted this barn before. Um, the first time I painted it, I did not like it precisely for that reason. And it was uh, similar lighting as what we have here. I can see I don't have enough cadmium red on my palette. It can be tempting when you see these, um, you know, when you have a uh, bright red local color um, in your subject, it can be very tempting to just squeeze out some cadmium red and slap it on there and that's it. But even if it looks intense red, I recommend toning it down a bit because um, usually your, your eye might be playing, playing a little bit of trick on you. You can always build back up to uh, some intense color. But if you lay intense color down right away, it can really throw you off as far as your relationships are concerned. I actually have another video where I did a um, red chicken barn in sunlight. I talked about that. I uh, lowered the value of it. I think I'm gonna do that here too to avoid having something really gaudy and bright. Okay, next thing I should do, and I should have did this earlier, is identify my darkest dark and get that in there. And there are a couple spots in here that could be considered almost pure black. I'm not going to make them pure black because there is some uh, distance and air between me and the subject. And I know just from experience that uh, a black that's 
little far away from me is not going to be as black as uh, blackness really up close. And so if I tone the black down just a little bit, I'm going to use some Viridian to mix my black. Mixing that with uh, burnt sienna. And one of the reasons why I'd like to use Viridian to make my blacks for outdoor subjects like this is because Viridian is a little bit lighter in value than um, ultramarine blue. And so it's going to uh, keep you from getting too crazy dark with, with your uh, blacks in your subject. Looks like the person who owns this barn is out mowing. I think mowing is a uh, activity that property owners do when they see plein air artists to uh, kind of like keep an eye on us without looking too conspicuous about it. It's not the first time it's happened and I'm sure it won't be the last. Okay, another uh, dark warm area is right underneath here where the shadow starts. The shadow does cool off as it comes down as it starts to pick up the uh, cool blue skylight, but right up in here underneath where the roof comes out, it's not going to pick up any uh, cool skylight, so it's going to warm back up again. And you kind of have that same thing going on right here too. Two. Sorry, I can't talk today. By the way, if you're uh, also if you're new to my channel, don't take vocabulary lessons. Vocabulary lessons from me. I can't talk to save my life in plein air paint. Um, when I teach in a studio, I can talk pretty good and keep everything straight, but that's because I'm not painting a million miles an hour. There's a opening right there, a dark. I'm just going to get that in. Very important is the relationship between the sunlit side of the barn and the dark side of the barn. It's arguably uh, the most important uh, relationship in this painting, color and value relationship. So the difference between this and that. And when I talk about the difference, it's not just the value, though that is arguably the most important aspect, but it's also the uh, color temperature. We're dealing with sunlight, so we have warm, light, cool shadows overall, but there are uh, caveats to that, ambient light and things like that. Now, I don't have to get the difference between this and that exactly how it is in my subject, and I might not want to, because then I might end up painting this really gaudy bright, because it is fairly bright in reality, but I said I, I want to stylize it a little bit. I don't have to paint every color exactly as nature presents it to me. 
you use nature um, to create your uh, your thoughts, your feelings about something, expression of it. And if you get that, even if it doesn't look at the exact same colors and values as a scene, that doesn't matter as long as it's convincing and you got across the message you wanted to get across. That's what's most important. Okay, the next thing is, uh, I, I usually don't get into the sky this early, but probably, arguably, the two most powerful colors, well, really, there's three overall colors going on. You have the red of the barn, you have the green of the grass, and you have the blue of the sky. And, <clears throat> excuse me, so getting the relationships between those in there is, uh, you know, if you get those relationships down, then you're uh, you're on your way. So I'm going to put in some of the sky. I'm going to do a little bit of cerulean and uh, viridian. And I don't know if I want to stay this uh, pure, if you will, but. We're going to start with that. It was so peaceful before the lawnmower started. <laughs> And I'm not going to worry about covering everything up in there yet. I might leave some of that exposed. I did use a clean brush when I did this guy. I can always dirty it up, but once you dirty it up, it's hard to go clean again. Clean off the palette a little bit. Uh, I was hoping they were done mowing the lawn. So now before I uh, jump into the screen, or into this uh, red, I'm going to throw in some green. Keeping it fairly uh, neutralized for right now. It's easy to go crazy with greens. I see a lot of artists, they'll paint these super intense greens and... Greens usually are not like that in nature. I like to think of greens almost as like a... Um, almost more gray, like a chromatic uh, gray color, if you will.
Now, if there are strong greens in a go that are going to go into your painting, um, you usually want to reserve those for um, the very foreground area because the rules of aerial perspective and these rules apply in most cases, not always, but most of the time. Uh, with aerial perspective, the first color to drop out is going to be yellow. All else being equal. Um, so if you save your strong yellows for the foreground, it's going to push everything back. Give your painting more depth. So right down here, I'm going to put my strongest green, my brightest green. And if you notice how doing that, you know, it makes these greens feel further away. It's just because uh, they have less yellow in them. If you're um, interested in taking your painting to, the, painting to the next level, you know, if you're a beginner or you've been doing it for a little while and you've kind of hit a plateau, which happens to all of us, um, I teach live online painting classes. Do it through Zoom. We meet um, four weekends a month on Saturdays usually. And... Um, I take you through a painting step-by-step. -step. Like I said, we spend a month doing it. We don't paint nearly as fast because we don't have to. But I um, show you all the colors I'm mixing, how I'm applying the paint, going into uh, a lot of detail, and giving you uh, personalized feedback on your painting. All the uh, sessions are recorded, so if you can't make it, no big deal. You can watch the recording later. And if you did make it, you can still watch the recording later to pick up on anything you might have missed. You can watch it as many times as you like. We also have a uh, live QA session and a live critique session where you could submit you know other paintings you've done and or are working on and get feedback on those and you learn a lot on those too i i take um a lot of the uh, images of paintings i'll bring them into photoshop i used to be a graphic designer and i'll um make adjustments right there so you can see you know, the things that you could fix in it or consider changing, so on and so forth. It's, that's all anonymous, so I don't identify you unless you choose to be identified. But um, it's a great way to learn. And it's a fun group. But if you're interested, there's a link below. Um, doors open uh, once a month if there is a uh, space and you sign up on the priority list using the link below and i'll let you know if there's a space and 
If you like, you can become a member. What's really cool about it too is that um, when you become a member, you get uh, instant access to the recordings of all past sessions, um, including my full demos. Um, I also demonstrate the painting we're gonna, we would work on that month um, from start to finish on my own, just because uh, painting in a teaching environment is um, a bit different. I have to go a lot slower and um, it's, uh, it's not as, uh, you know, you're not painting as instinctively as you would um, on your own. So I try to give you the best of both worlds. You, can, you get to watch me paint it on my own. And then we have the uh, live sessions where you paint along with me. But when you become a member, you get immediate access to uh, all those recordings that you can watch at your leisure. So anyway, check it out. I said we take all levels, beginners. Uh, beginners are gonna, got a number of beginners and they do, they do good. It is a little more of a struggle for beginners, but being a beginner is a more of a struggle period. And it's better to struggle and get some feedback and know what you need to fix versus just shooting in the dark and going on your own. I did that and it took me a heck of a lot longer to uh, to learn than if I had sought out instruction myself. Okay, one very important thing is I want to make sure that any lights that I highlights I put in these trees, I try to keep them uh, lower in value than your ground plane. Even if it doesn't look that way, you still want to do that because um, it's going to read better. It's going to read more correctly. Just an absolutely beautiful day out here. It's not too hot. There's no, hardly any humidity. That's what really gets me is the humidity. I really struggle with the humidity. Sticky days, even if it's only like 75 degrees, just I do not do well in them. I still get out and paint, but uh, I'm not quite as happy. As this tree rounds off here toward the sky, it just uh, went a little lighter, a little cooler, 
I'm gonna do that here too. Gives them a bit more of a three-dimensional feel. Okay, now this point where I can really uh, analyze this and ask myself how I like the overall relationships. I think they're pretty good. I do like this more toned down red, not the bright gaudy red that I think I'm seeing up there. A noisy motorcycle coming. I like to uh, hit my field studies with a palette knife at a certain point. I don't always do it, but a lot of times I do. Um, kind of messes it up a bit, gives it a little more character, and it kind of keeps me from getting locked into a uh, precision mentality of uh, trying to get real super precise drawing. Drawing is one of my uh, favorite aspects of painting, but um, it can be overdone. And I'm not out here to get precise drawing. I'm out here to uh, get good color and value information. The drawing I can get from a photograph, for the most part. They, even with a photo, though, there's still perspective issues and foreshortening uh, that can mess it up. Especially the worst is if you're using a wide angle lens um, on a tall subject, that'll just completely destroy it, in my opinion. Okay, let's uh, clean off the palette a little bit here. Okay, so I cleaned my palette and I actually moved my uh, canvas. Uh, my whole box here so that I could face the barn because um, this whole area is in shadow. There's a big tree above me and I think it's going to stay in shadow for quite a long time. So I think I'm safe in doing this. And it is nice when you can look directly at the subject and, and paint it versus constantly turning your head like I was having to do before. The only problem with this is there's going to be the temptation to want to go as bright and as intense as I think that is. And the challenge you have is that when you're dealing with a uh, very prismatic local color like this, a warm color in sunlight, um, you really can't match the uh, temperature and the intensity and the brightness like nature can. So I don't even recommend trying and it can throw you off until you have quite a bit of experience or, or knowledge under your belt because you'll fight against that try to make it super intense and bright and you don't really need to have a nice painting
see that's brighter, but it's starting to look too cool. I think I'm gonna have to adjust the value, but first I gotta get me some uh, cadmium red here. Okay, I got the cadmium red replenished. Um, I could have did one of those dramatic, uh, or attempts at drama things that you see in other uh, plein air painting videos. No offense to people who do this, but um, where they show them like putting the colors on the palette and all that, and they spend 10 minutes watching them walk out to the place or get out of their car, or set up their stuff. I, some people might like that. I just personally, and that never did much for me. I just want to see the guy or the <clears throat> or the lady paint. I don't want to. Uh, I don't need to see them setting up their stuff, but hopefully, I'm not offending anybody by saying that. If I am, I'm sure I'll hear about it in the comment section. But I like to get down to business. When I do watch those videos, I usually just fast forward past all that stuff. So I'm darkening uh, this barn again. I just didn't like it that bright, uh, that light and value. So I'm going it's a little bit darker and adding some slight variations of red to it. You don't want to make it one solid red color. So I'm just putting in some orange, some ochre, things like that until it gives me the impression that I want. Let's say if you guys do want to see me uh, spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes setting up all my stuff and uh, let me know in the comments section. I probably won't do it either way, but it'd uh, be interesting if that is what people really like because I see, so many, uh, see it done in so many other videos. Okay, here, this is a little too dark, I think. Um, it's okay, it was a nice starting base, but as I look up there, now that I have my um, the shade box turned toward the subject, that would have been a dramatic thing. I could have recorded myself turning the uh, Peche box toward the subject and talked about that. That would have been maybe nice and exciting, but oh well, I didn't do it. Hopefully you'll be okay with that. But anyway, um, as I turned it toward the subject, I'm seeing, you know, more color in there than what I had. A little lighter in value. So let's go in and fix that. It could have changed too. Um, just might be that there's more ambient light. Sometimes things will change like that. The sun will shift and it'll shine on something and cast this light all over the place that wasn't there before. So let's uh, fix it up here. Just bump the tripod. Let me make sure it's still good. Yeah, I think so. I'm a one man show here, so.
I don't have a uh, camera guy to tell me, hey, we're out of focus and all that. I want to make sure though that as I look at this scene that I'm squinting at it when I look because otherwise if I don't squint at it I'll start to look in just one spot and when you focus on just one area you lose the relationship that it has the color relationship it has with another area and pretty soon you're painting all kinds of crazy stuff that doesn't look right so This shadow here has shortened a little bit. This one's gotten longer. You're not gonna see that in the photo because it's something that's been happening since I took the photo, but I like that effect. So even though I'm not a big fan of chasing the light, I'm gonna chase this a little bit to get it to look the way I want it to. Another uh, challenging thing about this is I'm, I'm standing in quite a bit of shadow here. And this scene, there's a lot of shadow right in the foreground. And then, you know, it opens up into all this light area. I'm basically, I'm painting mostly the light area here, not really putting much shadow in. But that can trip up your eyes when you're out here because you're kind of subconsciously comparing this bright open area to the uh, dark shadows that you're standing in. And um, and you want to paint this like super bright. Whereas if you're standing out in the bright area, looking at it, you probably wouldn't get that, you know, think it's quite as bright. One thing I do want to do though is I do want to lighten up the ground plane, this uh, grass some more. guys must have a big lawn. They're still out mowing. Now I really want to compare this value with that because um, you know I, I base this value on all the other values that are there, the relationships, and so changing this ground plane could have an effect on how this red appears, and I want to be careful with that.
Also, if you uh, like this channel, if you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, um, I uh, have set up a Patreon account where you can uh, donate so much a month to help me uh, keep this going. There is uh, extra cost in this canvas. All the paint I'm using, I'm not using cheap paint. I am using artist grade paint here. And this is actually oil prime linen I'm painting on. So it, and a lot of these I would not be doing unless I was recording it for YouTube. So all that stuff. Plus, I think it was just like a 20 some mile drive here through my car. So if you want to uh, help me keep going, that'd be awesome. Um, what I'm going to do is a thank you to um, Patreon supporters, depending on the level, is um, give you uh, you know early access to my videos, and um, also I'm going to give away one of these sketches that I do on a monthly basis. Um, have a drawing. So you might be able to win the sketch. I um, my primary subject matter is historical Native American. I, I mainly do this just for practice and for the videos. Um, so I thought, why not give it to the people who help me out? Because they, this will not go into any of my galleries. Actually, it could. My some of my galleries do sell some of my landscapes, but it's not my main forte. So anyway, if you want a chance to uh, win a painting, win, or win a sketch, one of my oil sketches, uh, become a member and support me. But even if you don't, I thank you for watching. See, I just dropped all my brushes. So I'm gonna pick those up. Okay, brushes are picked up. I think to give a um, little more interest here and help this thing read better, there is um, fairly dark shadow in the foreground here. And even though it's uh, a little bit lower down than what we're seeing it, I'm going to stick it in. I think in doing that it's going to uh, help make this uh, feel brighter. Okay, I just notice I'm running out of some more colors, so go grab a Looks like I need some more Viridian and Burnt Sienna. Okay, Viridian and Burnt Sienna replenished as well some Cadmium Yellow Light. Actually, I, uh, full disclosure, I'm not using Burnt Sienna anymore. This is Transparent Red Oxide. Um, like I said, they're, they're so identical you don't even notice the difference, uh, really. There, there is a slight difference, but it's not big. darks underneath there. Dang, they're still mowing the lawn.
can hear some goats uh, in the background. Love those sounds. It's so neat when you come out into these uh, country areas and you hear the all the different animals and even when they are perpetually mowing the lawn. Ah, I keep dropping all my brushes. This, uh, I have to have this thing uh, tilted so far down. So that you guys can see both the uh, palette and the painting. But this brush holder doesn't work very good with that. not there but I'm gonna put another shadow right up here just for fun give it a little bit of interest Having those dark shadows really, uh, for me anyway, really helped um, make this area up here feel brighter. Ah, just keep dropping all my brushes. I'm gonna have to figure out a different arrangement here. Okay, just kind of tilted the whole brush holder mechanism up a bit. This is uh, Apple Orchard Country in Pennsylvania. It's a gigantic apple orchard here. This is in Adams County, Pennsylvania. And um, it's a beautiful area. Hardly anybody knows about it. I think I'm probably one of the only artists who painted it. I did bring uh, master artist uh, Roger Dale Brown and his wife, uh, Beverly Ford Evans, here a number of years ago, and the three of us spent an entire day um, painting together. It was really neat. Painting getting sprayed by uh, the um, trucks that were spraying the apple trees and all that. And I remember the one point we had to pick up our uh, pache boxes and run because we were in, a, in the midst of the apples and uh, all of a sudden they came with the tractor to spray the perils of plein air painting. So besides Roger and Bev, um, I might be the only artist that's painted this area. Maybe, maybe not. But it's a beautiful area. There's a house back up in here, creating some cool colors. I'm not going to try to paint it in exactly, I'm just going to try to give a suggestion of it.
like the sun's starting to creep out a little bit and hit my uh, my painting. I think we'll be okay though. I think it's gonna disappear again soon behind some behind some leaves on that big tree. I've not painted the roof yet of that barn. Partly to keep you all in suspense. Just kidding. Just uh, that won't take too long to do, and it's not a big deal as far as getting what I want in this painting. little too yellow. Let's uh, cool that off just a bit. I think I'm going to switch to a brush. Now I have some courage to grab my brushes. I know they won't all tumble down. I might have mentioned earlier there's some goats um, very close by. They're making a lot of noise, almost sounds like they're being tortured or something, or having a big conversation. It's kind of freaky, they almost sound human. Some tree branches here, they kind of come in and disappear. Give a slight indication of them.
There's a window in that house there. People are like, what the heck is he doing? It's always kind of fun when you get hecklers. I usually get those when I'm in college towns, college kids, I guess they're bored. They gotta go out and heckle plein air artists. I just want to break up this uh, mass a bit, give it a little bit of interest. Go with some cool darks, basically just viridian and a little bit of alizarin permanent. I have some warm darks in there and kind of juxtapose that with some cool darks. Okay, now this barn is the facade of this barn is pretty uninteresting right now, so we're going to clean up the pallet a bit and uh, try to give that a little more interest. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is mix up some, some darks here. Don't want to go full strength. Want it to be a uh, little on the warm red side because this is a uh, red barn after all. I'm gonna put just a little bit of a color on my palette knife and just drag it down. Actually, that probably won't work too probably won't work too well because that palette knife is no longer straight. That's an old one that I've dropped many times. I did bring a uh, Badger hairbrush. I wish I would have brought my bigger one, but this will still do. Okay, 
Okay, just had to do a battery change. Okay, up at the top there's this uh, light thing. It looks like a piece of plywood actually that they stuck in the window. Just gonna put that there. Now with these barns you can have um, quite a bit of fun and make them even more interesting than what they are. And you can do that by um, adding, you know, even more uh, windows and things like that. You don't have to paint it exactly how it is, unless it's a commission and they want their barn exactly how it is. And you're kind of stuck, but as long as it's not a commission, you can kind of do what you want. And a lot of times I might leave stuff out. I might not paint every window that's in there. Sometimes it gets to be too much. This one has an interesting pattern. See, and I don't think I like that. I think that's too spotty. It's just a bit much. These things, uh, definitely less is more. Right here they have some white thing. I don't know what the heck it is. If it's, once again, plywood covering it up. Other challenges, I have a stop sign like right here that I have to try to look around. Um, this is right by an, inter by an intersection. Um, Pretty mellow road, but still, they have a stop sign here. This is actually three roads that it's a three way intersection. So, so they had to put the stop sign there, I guess, which is good, but makes it kind of challenging to paint because I definitely don't want to paint the stop sign in.
Okay, so we've taken some uh, definite artistic uh, liberty with uh, where we put the windows and all that fun stuff. Which is good. I do not feel any need to apologize to anybody for doing that. Oh, I thought they were shutting off the lawnmower. <laughs> I was hopeful. I really thought, oh, nice quiet area. Yeah, quiet intersection. And then they had to go out and mow the lawn. And I bet about the time I'm done, they'll be done mowing the lawn too. I'm sure that won't be planned, it just probably will be the way it is, but. Okay, let's get that roof in. I'm gonna use the same brush I used for the sky. That roof has, it's a interesting gray color, almost has a slight greenish tinge compared with the sky. If you're unsure when you're dealing with these ambiguous colors, just get something close, paint it in there, and then make some adjustments to it. You know, paint it in. First ask yourself, is it too light, too dark? And then, you know, too warm, too cool? 
if it's too uh, cool, add some warm color to it. If it's too warm, add some cool color. Honestly, with these uh, really neutral things like this, like this gray roof, as long as I'm, as long as the value is where I want it to be, and the color is close, I'm good. I don't need to sit there and obsess over getting it exactly right, because back in the studio, you're never gonna really know the difference anyway. Yeah, it might be a slightly different color. Could have been a slightly different color. They might have, uh, you know, it could be slightly rusted. I don't know if there's a variety of aluminum that would cause it, you know, to have darker versus lighter aluminum, but nobody really knows anyway. So you don't have to worry too much about it. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the values, the relationships. It's all coming together pretty nice. Just need to ask myself if it really needs anything else. I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna go into the facade. Once again, just see if I can punch it up with a little more uh, interest and texture. See, I'm never going to get that intense bright red that I'm seeing out there. Um, you don't want to put Pure red isn't going to do it. See, that's pure cadmium red on this barn, and that's too dark. The value is just way too dark for the value for what you're seeing out there. So to uh, you know to lighten it to make it a lighter value, you can add yellow or white. But yellow is adding yellow is going to make it more orange, and it's not going to look as red. And adding white is going to make it cooler and a little more toward pink. Um, and you can add a little bit of both, but you're never going to match. You're never going to match it exactly. And if I go really light in value anyway to try to capture the uh, the intensity that way, what's going to happen is uh, it's just going to look. It's not going to look right. That that light value is it's going to make the barn look like it could float away or something. So you have to uh, you have to compromise. You can't capture every aspect of nature just because with this especially you're dealing with um, you know, you're dealing with sunlight sunlight which is very warm hitting the uh, hitting a very warm subject and your paint is only going to go so warm and so light so you just don't don't sweat it too much. Just paint the effect, not the, uh, don't try to paint it so literally.
So I'm gonna put some ochre there. And that ochre, it offsets it a little bit. It's kind of nice, but you know, it's never gonna give me that intense bright red just because I can't replicate exact sunlight perfectly. But you don't, the nice thing is you don't have to replicate it exactly to get a nice painting. You can just suggest it and get some good relationships down. And you'll be fine. And I had said earlier how I um, had brought uh, uh, the artist Roger Dale Brown and uh, his wife Beverly Ford Evans is also a really good artist out here a number of years ago. And the three of us actually painted this barn together. And I watched, I kind of learned some of the stuff I'm teaching you from watching Roger that day. He, um, he did not try to paint the intense red he actually dulled everything down a little bit and it created a beautiful you know um, beautiful scene beautiful uh, painting and you know when you when you get away from the actual scene and you're not comparing it you know jump out of you like oh that looks nice but when you're out here comparing it with the scene, it can drive you nuts because you're just fighting with it and trying to capture it exactly as it is, which is pretty much impossible to do. Getting that dark in right there is very important. That really helped, in my opinion. But I want to thank you for watching. And uh, like I said, if you haven't subscribed, if you could, that would be awesome. It really helps out encourages me to keep making these videos. If you're interested in studying under me, um, go to the link below in the description. That'll take you to the uh, waiting list. And when the door is open for another month of painting, I'll let you know. And um, if you want to uh, consider supporting me on Patreon, that'd be great. And you might be able to uh, win this sketch. And stick around to the end, you'll see the uh, finished painting. And if you have any comments, you know, go ahead and leave them below. Sometimes I'm scared to say that, but hopefully it'll be nice to me. You can hear the rooster there, that's pretty funny. I thought roosters only crowed in the morning, but I guess maybe this guy's confused.
All right, thank you for watching.